to pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for, pray us. for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray, pray for, for us. us. San Roque, pray, pray for, for us. us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray, pray for us. San Pedro Calungso, pray, pray for, for us. us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole Church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of His Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that He entered His own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation following in his footsteps, so that, being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. We shall now have the prayer of blessing of palm branches, and we invite those who are joining us online to hold their palm branches and to pray with us. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through Him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Let us now listen to the proclamation of God's Word. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the disciples, when Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a cult tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, Why are you doing this? Reply, The Master has need of it and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a colt tethered at a gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing, untying the colt? They answered them just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the call to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him, as well as those following, kept crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Almighty, every living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pluck my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The Word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All you who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to my aid. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him, Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests handed Jesus over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call 
the king of the Jews. They shouted again, Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! And kept striking his head with a reed, and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with meal, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him, they crucified two bandits, one at his right and one at his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Ah, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, he save others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani. Which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait. Let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Please kneel. Please stand. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two, from top to bottom, when the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, Palm Sunday is quite unique because it is the only Mass within the liturgical year that has two Gospels. The first Gospel is proclaimed at the beginning of the celebration 
during the blessing of the palms. And the second gospel is the narrative of the passion of Jesus. And I'm not sure if you have observed it, that in these two gospels, there were a lot of shouting. Sa dalawang ibanghelyo na rinig natin sa ating pagdiriwang ngayon, puro sigawan. Nagsisigawan ang mga tao. The first gospel is about the entry of Jesus into the holy city of Jerusalem. And as he entered Jerusalem, people showed up and welcomed him as a king, as the Messiah. They carried palm branches, they laid their cloaks on the path of Jesus, and they were shouting with joy, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Yan ang kanilang sigaw. Nagagalak sila na tanggapin si Jesus. Naghuhumiyaw sila sa saya sa pagpasok ni Jesus sa Jerusalem. Hosanna sa anak ni David. Pinagpala ang naparirito sa ngalan ng Panginoon. Hosanna. But in the second gospel, the narrative of the passion of the Lord, there were also people shouting, not out of joy, but because of anger, envy, and hatred. They were shouting, crucify him. Yan na ang kanilang sigaw, na wala na yung saya, na wala na yung galak at pagsalubong ang isinisigaw na nila mula sa galit sa kanilang puso, ipako siya sa krus. The first gospel was very much in line with what St. Paul tells us in our first reading today. Let every knee bend in the heavens, on the earth, and under the earth, and every tongue proclaim, every tongue cry out that Jesus is Lord. While our first reading today is very consistent with the gospel narrative of the passion of Jesus, Jesus is that suffering servant described by the prophet Isaiah. He was maltreated. He was maligned. He was tortured. He was rejected and despised. My dear brothers and sisters, the first shout was a sign of joy. Welcome, while the second was a sign of abhorrence. The first was about recognition of who Jesus is. The second was about condemnation. The lawang magkaibang isinisigaw ng mga tao. Sigaw ng pagpupuri. Sigaw ng pagtanggap, Hosanna sa anak ni David. At yung ikalawa, sigaw ng pagkutya, sigaw ng paghuhusga, sigaw ng galit at inggit, ipako siya sa krus. They wanted to get rid of Jesus. They wanted Him dead. And so they shouted, Crucify Him. My dear brothers and sisters, these two are still very much present even in our times. 
Even now, we could hear people shouting, Hosanna, expressing their faith and belief in Jesus. But there are also those who shout, Crucify Him, because they do not believe in Jesus, and they want to get rid of Him. Hanggang ngayon, nandyan pa rin ang mga sigaw na yan. Maaaring na sa ibang paraan lamang ng pagpapahayag, pero palakasan pa rin ang sigaw. May mga sumisigaw ng, O sana, ipagbunyi si Jesus. Pero may mga sumisigaw din naman ng ipako siya sa krus. Kailangan siyang mawala sa mundong ito. You know, these past days, I have been hearing these two voices. Nitong mga nakalipas na araw, narinig natin ang isang tinig na ipinagbubunyi ipinaglalaban at pinupuri si Jesus. Our apostolic administrator, Bishop Pabilio, has been very firm about the conviction that our faith is essential. He was maligned. He was tortured in a way by social media, by many voices, but he remained firm in shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. But you know, there are also many other voices trying to overpower his voice because they are shouting out, Crucify him! Get rid of Jesus! He is not important! He is not essential! We are celebrating this year the 500th anniversary of the arrival of Christianity in the Philippines. And during this year, we are challenged to all the more be proud of our faith. Ipagmalaki yung ating pananampalataya kay Jesus. Maaaring sinasabi natin, oo, nananampalataya tayo kay Jesus. Pero ipahayag din natin, ipakita natin yung ating pananampalataya sa Kanya. Jesus is important, but the expressions of our faith in Him are equally important. Sa mundo ngayon, parang nababaliktad na. Ano ba yung ating isinisigaw? Ano ba ang yung isinisigaw? Ano ba ang isinisigaw ng buhay mo? O sana, o ipako siya sa krus? Maraming sumisigaw ng yung business is important. Economy is important. Industry is important. Work and livelihood are important. And we cannot forego of them. They are essential. Babagsak tayo kung papabayaan natin ng mga ito. Pero si Jesus, ang simbahan, ang pananampalataya, parang hanggang ngayon, pwedeng iisang tabi at mabaliwala. Ano ba ang tinig na ating isinisigaw? Hosanna, bilang pagmamalaki ng ating paniniwala kay Jesus o ipako siya sa krus okay lang na mawala okay lang na isang tabi today my dear brothers and sisters we begin Holy Week the most important week for us Christians and it is sad that for the second time, you cannot come to church and physically celebrate the Holy Week services because of the danger of the virus. But even with the restrictions, and even with those who try to suppress the faith 
and our expressions of faith, we could still shout out loud, Hosanna to Jesus. And let us shout loud so that we can overpower those who shout, Crucify Him. Mga Kristiyano, mga Katolikong Pilipino, maaari po bang lakas-lakas sa naman natin yung pagsigaw natin ng Hosanna sa anak ni David? Maaari bang lakas-lakas sa naman natin yung ating paninindigan at pagmamalaki sa ating pananampalataya at pagpapahayag nito upang matabunan ng ating mga boses ang mga sumisigaw ng ipako siya sa krus. Even though you cannot go to church this week, even though we cannot be together to celebrate this important week, you could still proclaim your faith in Jesus in many ways, in many creative ways. Let us shout out to the whole world that we need Jesus, that we believe in Jesus, that Jesus is essential, that the church is essential, that we need Jesus and the church, and without them, we do not have life. Let us all together profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray to our Heavenly Father, who will that all human beings be saved through the passion, death, and resurrection of His Son, Jesus Christ. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. That Pope Francis, the bishops, priests, and religious continue to preach the good news of Jesus' cross and resurrection, thus bringing hope and strength to people who are suffering and carrying unbearable burdens, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That our political and civil leaders use their authority to defend the poor, the voiceless, and those unjustly trampled upon, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the victims of natural calamities and man-made disasters not be crushed by, but be delivered from the weight of their suffering, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That there will be a swift end to the coronavirus pandemic that afflicts our world, that our God and Father will heal the sick, strengthen those who care for them, and help us all to persevere in faith, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That in celebration of the Holy Week, we may be renewed in mind and heart, and grow in unselfish love and dedicated service to our needy brothers and sisters, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray in silence for our personal petitions. Let us pray for those who need our prayers and for the intentions offered in this Mass.
God our Father, help us to follow with the footsteps of your Son. We rejoice at his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, leading to his death on Calvary. Make us glory in his cross, that we too may share in the victory of his resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, Yet, by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, in joyful celebration, we too acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Broderick our Administrator and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us ask the Father to forgive our sins and to bring us to forgive those who sin against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not, not worthy that, that you should enter under, under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We wish to thank all of you for joining us in our Mass here at the Manila Cathedral this morning. We especially thank those who are joining us online and we continue to thank you for your help and your support to the Manila Cathedral. We also wish to thank the many social pages sharing this Mass. Maraming salamat po sa pagpapalaganap ng pagdiriwang ng banal na misa sa ating social media. We have already entered the Holy Week and we hope that as we join Jesus in His triumphant entry into the Holy City, let us also join Him in His suffering and in His death so that we may also be one with Him in the glory of the Resurrection. Samahan po natin si Jesus sa mga araw na ito at nawa kahit na tayo'y nasa tahanan lamang ay gawin nating banal ang mga araw na ito sa pamamagitan ng ating panalangin at pagmamalasakit sa isa't isa. Gawin po nating punong-puno ng pagmamahal ang mga mahal na araw. Pagmamahal natin sa Diyos at pagmamahal natin sa ating kapwa. Please also continuously uh, uh, monitor our uh, Facebook page for the schedules of our activities, our online services here at the Manila Cathedral. 
Baka po magkaroon ng mga pagbabago yung ating mga schedules dahil na rin po sa curfew hours na ipatutupad simula bukas. So, baybayan nyo lamang po ang mga announcements sa ating Facebook page. Maraming salamat po at nawa ay ingatan at pagpalain tayo ng Panginoon lalong-lalo na ngayong mga mahal na araw. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.